Today I'm building an outdoor shower to add to my 50 by 70 garage house. All right guys, so first off, if you're new here, this is my house. So the entire structure, like I said, is 50 by 70. The garage portion is 50 by 48. And then on the other end there where the roof pitch changes, that is the living section. So that section is 50 by 22. And there is an unfinished second floor on that section. And most of my projects are happening inside the garage. Uh, so I've been here for almost five years now and uh, slowly finishing other parts of it off. Like I said, the second floor in the living space is not finished yet, but I plan on doing that somewhat soon. I did add a bedroom there in the fall, which was on my YouTube channel if you're interested. So now I have two bedrooms, uh, one bathroom in there. I do have a bathroom here in the garage. This was also a build that is on my channel. This was pretty simple, uh, just building walls and then did a custom barn door that I built as well. So now next to it, this is what we're gonna be working on today. So here is actually the plumbing. It is already in place for the shower. So this is pretty simple. There's actually some valves in the wall here behind this plate. And so what I can do for the winter, I reach in there, shut off the valves. And then because I also have these drains down here, this is the lowest point in the system. I can open those up and it will empty out anything in these pipes and then also the pipes that go to the outside and the whole uh, shower head apparatus. That way I can prevent this from freezing since my garage part is not insulated, but this wall is fully insulated. And I actually did just have to do a few repairs to this because I think for some reason, even though it was drained, the copper pipes expanded and there was a very small section of plastic tubing here that ended up cracking. So what I did was I replaced all that and these are with these uh, quick connect sharp bike fittings. And now if anything does happen in the future, it'll be very easy to replace. So then outside, it's very simple. So those copper pipes are coming through the wall just here. And then I got my two valves, left is hot, right is cold. I do need to mark them in some way. Then this is just copper tubing into a T and then up to a shower head. So yes, everything is now working properly. But as you can see, I have no enclosure whatsoever. So no, I've never taken a shower out here. But I would like to finally start using this, especially now here in the summer, it is very hot and it's really nice to take an outside shower. So now quickly, this is my rough plan. This is just like a top down view. So this is my existing building. The shower head would be here. I'm basically gonna place two four by four posts in the ground here and then attaching uh, to the wall with a two by four on each side. And then what's not shown is there will be some two by four structure between these. Haven't figured out exactly what I'm gonna do, but the main thing first is to get the four by four posts placed. I will try to go as deep as I can, hopefully 30 plus inches so I can be below frost line. I'll fill the hole with some gravel and then I've got some quick crete to set around the posts. And I will be building some sort of a door with a two by four frame. So here are my materials. So I've got about 12 uh, two by four by eights and then these are all treated. Here are my two four by four posts. I got 10 footers because I know they're gonna be at least a couple feet in the ground. So then I can have about seven feet above ground which should be plenty. Here is my quick crete. And so that's the fast setting stuff that you don't need to mix. So you should be able to just pour it in the hole and then add water. And then for the exterior here, I have galvanized uh, metal sheet. So this is like metal roofing sheet, actually the same exact stuff that I put on the top of my woodshed there. My entire house is also out of metal. This is the white painted. And some of the walls in my living space are actually the same galvanized metal. If you, you may have seen that in previous videos. So that will go on the outside, but first we will focus on the main frame portion. Like I said, set these four by four posts and then get going with the frame and building the door.
All right guys, so I just got everything finished up on the outdoor shower here. So it was a pretty easy process. I started uh, focusing on these outer four x four posts because those were kind of the most important part of the structure. So I dug down with the post hole digger. I did end up hitting some pretty solid rock right around 18 inches and it really wasn't worth trying to get past that. Uh, this is some really solid ground here. There's so much slate in this soil. So I don't think I'm gonna have too much movement with that. I then did put some gravel in the bottom, about six inches worth. And then I placed the posts in. I chose not to concrete them there at that point because I wanted to put the rest of the structure up to hold the posts in their proper location. So as you saw, I first attached the two by fours to my building here. So there's one there and then one over here. And that way I could then start the framing. So I had this upper two by four to hold the post in place. Then I did the upper and the lower two by fours for the rest of the frame. And that way I had my four by four posts held exactly where I knew they needed to be. And once I had those in, I could pour in the quick crete. So that is the type of concrete that you don't need to pre-mix. You can just pour it into the holes and then add the specified amount of water. So I did all of that and then waited till the next day to backfill. They say you should leave that uh, about a couple inches below the dirt surface. So I then put a little bit of dirt. I did try to angle the concrete away from the 4x4 so that the water runs away from it. And that all seemed to set up well and it was extremely solid. Then I could move on with the rest of the frame, which was pretty simple. Basically just putting in those middle two by fours to give it a little bit more rigidity. And next I worked on the door, which was nice. I could just build it on the ground so I could make sure it was nice and flat and square. I did add this diagonal to try and keep it from sagging at all. Of course, then when I added the metal to the outside, that kind of shores it up as well. So it does seem really solid. I put uh, three hinges here just to make sure that I was supporting the weight sufficiently. It was a little difficult to uh, hold this up by myself. As you saw, I was using a floor jack to hold the end and then start to screw it in. It worked out pretty well. So then once I had the door framed out and installed, I then got to work on putting the metal on the outside. So I bought three foot by 12 foot sheets. So basically I just had to cut them perfectly in half because I'm using a six foot height here. The basic dimensions, I have it a foot off the ground and then six foot of metal. So then that height is about seven feet off the ground. And also the rest of the structure, it's a little over four feet in this width direction. And then this way is a little bit over six feet. So I measured what two of those panels next to each other were, and it was a 74 inches. So a little bit more than six feet on this side. And I had plenty of these screws left over actually from the build from my house. So they are meant for the metal roofing and siding because as you can see, that's the rest of my house. And I do like how this ended up looking. So this is the galvanized metal. I chose to leave the four x four exposed on this side. And then also over here, it would have been a little odd to cut just a little strip and try to put it on this post. So I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And I do kind of like the look that it kind of breaks it up a little bit. It's just not all metal. So once I was at that point, I was ready to update the landscaping. So I first did dig up all the grass. I also did lay down that landscape paper to also try to keep from weeds coming up through. And then I added the rocks. So this is known as like a, uh, kind of like a river rock. I was trying to match what I had. I did get it from the same supplier, but as you can see, it's, a, it's slightly different. It's a little bit more purple and a little darker. It also might be because the rest of this rock is a few years old. So I think it kind of blends in nice and it works. I did kind of do this angle curve so that it was a little bit easier now to mow around. And I have a little bit larger section here because I do have the entryway there. And then on this other side, kind of matched the same thing with it angling out so I can easily mow around it. So once I had the rock down, I could work on just the fine details, like adding this pool, kind of like a barn style pool. I just used the same screws that I used for the rest. I did have to put a little bit of a support in back here so I had something to screw it into. I also added the latches, the door locks. So very simple and easy. These are kind of designed for this kind of setup so the spacing is perfect so you can lock it. I also added one on the outside. And the reason for that is to keep the door shut when you're not using it so that the wind doesn't take the door and potentially damage your door or hinges. And then inside, I just got my towel hooks added. So I put one here. I kind of like that one higher for a towel. 
I also put one over here, whether for a towel or clothes, doesn't matter. It's nice to have extra hooks. And then the last thing I added this shelf, I didn't know if I'd need it because of course you can use these as natural shelves as well but it's nice to have something a little bit deeper here. And so far, this is the only piece that I added some uh, water seal to because I've had that uh, pressure treated three quarter inch for a long time. So it's definitely ready for some water sealer. The rest of it, I will wait a few months before I seal it up. You're supposed to let the pressure treated stuff dry out a little bit so that it can receive the water seal. And last but not least, I just painted the handles red and blue. They were just regular handles and uh, they were looking kind of grungy after sitting out here for about five years. So that's kind of nice and I didn't really want to mark up my actual siding. So I got them color coded. So this build is finished for now. I do have some ideas for a couple more detail improvements. I might add some pavers, especially here where it's the entranceway into the house. And then I could add some more pavers inside the shower just to give you a little bit more of a flat surface to stand on. Also, I wanted to mention I have about $500 in this project that's including the whole enclosure and the stone. If you don't already have some plumbing in place, I'd add at least another 200 bucks to that. So that's gonna be it for today. Let me know what you guys think of the new outdoor shower.